Well, very happy today to uh, be joined by a very special uh, individual, Dr. Randy Short, human rights activist out of the United States, but unfortunately not a very good occasion. Uh, Randy, uh, not good news that we have heard as far as the death of uh, brother Malcolm Shabazz. Malcolm, I mean, uh, Randy, tell me as far as about this situation and his very suspicious death. Tell me the information that you have so far, and thanks for being with me. The information that that I have is what everyone else has, and it is a a, a hash of lies, half truths, inaccuracies, and contradictions. So I've ceased to read uh, what's what's been stated because uh, there are many interested parties in not telling the complete truth, and it was all yesterday that uh, Kabila Shabazz, the mother of the decedent, uh, uh, Malcolm X's daughter, went to Mexico City with someone else to see if she could retrieve uh, Malcolm Latif El Shabazz, uh, his body. So only when the body is in the possession of someone in the family do I really think we'll get some idea of what happened there have been no pictures of his body in the press. There, there, the, the, there's so much, you know, they said he was dead in uh, Tijuana. Then he's dead in Mexico City. First he's shot. First he's stabbed. Then there's a big fight and he gets separated and his passport falls out. They find this American, they kill him. Then they uh, take him on the roof and throw him off the roof. Then they shoot him and then throw him off the roof, or then they just throw him off the roof and he dies, or then he's in Mexico City and he gets robbed and he gets beaten to death. Then he's in a mariachi bar and there's a $1,500 bill and there's a fight and two people get separated. Then there's the woman uh, of low virtue who seduces him to come into the mariachi bar and then there's a $1,200 bill and there's an argument, and then a short guy comes out with a gun, and then one guy's in one room, and there's an altercation, and a bunch of naked women are running around, and he gets out of the place and comes back and attacks the alchemist, is laying, dying outside of the mariachi bar, and he takes him to a hospital, and he dies. I mean, all these stories. Right. Um, which, which one is right? And the thing that concerns me is the guys from Rubeck, uh, the the uh, Mexican Americans uh, who were working uh, to promote black and brown unity are journalists capable of writing and articulating both in English and Spanish, and they seem to be incapable of creating a consistent, comprehensive story with no gaps or contradictions in timelines. And why why do you think why do you think that's the case, Doctor Short? Because there's something that's not being said. That there is a gentleman, his name is uh, Cleveland Delray Jr., known as JR, uh, who arranged or introduced these gentlemen to Malcolm, may have gone to Tijuana with them and came back, or whatever happened, maybe he didn't go at all. And Malcolm, a person that everyone knows, easily distracted, easily drawn away because he's a free-spirited type person, needed to be with people who were structured, disciplined, drug, alcohol, and promiscuity free. And Mexico has extreme racial hatred against black people to the point where Mexico does not even count blacks in its, Senate, in, in its census. And in the city of Los Angeles and many other places, it's commonplace for Mexican Americans to murder African Americans just because of their skin color. Well, well let's, let's concentrate on this particular situation. I want to go back to some of the contradictions you said. And of course, what the mainstream media is basically saying that this, this was a, a robbery. I guess the question at hand is if it's a simple. Well, the, assassination, the assassination of Malcolm X was just a black on black beef. 
Martin Luther King slipped and fell at the Bahrain Hotel. Medgar Evers uh, was a drunk driver. There's always some alternative reality that allows the white supremacists to never be guilty. They're the ones benefiting from the empire. They get the gold and the silver and make the drones and the planes, and yet don't want the guilt that if you have an empire and you enslave and oppress people, then you have to be rotten folks to control other people's destiny and steal their labor. You can't be saints and slave masters and oppressors at the same time. What does this do in general, uh, Randy? Because we have seen within the last uh, couple of weeks, it appears, again, a renewed attack on African Americans, especially those who have been in leadership uh, positions. We've seen Asante Shakura, uh, again, that has uh, made the headlines $2 million now that the FBI is uh, promising. His grandmother, 65, 65 years, years old. Even at slavery, even at the height of Jim Crow, black grandmothers were venerated. Uh, but the, the real thing that's in the calculus now is the term I use, black necks, uh, self-hating, fascistic, uh, America firsters, black laster politicians who are often not real African Americans. Susan Rice, Jamaican. American, Eric Holder, Barbadian American, and of course my favorite, uh, people think Obama means Jesus in African, I think it means the devil or the Antichrist. Uh, yes, I said it. Uh, Barack Obama, a Kenyan American, these people have nothing but resentment and aversion for the African American national minority. These, uh, oftentimes the United States has brought into its borders People who are black, who have nothing but hatred for the African Americans who make up the majority of people of African descent in the United States. So what's being done now, and this happened before, in New York, they used to use the Caribbean uh, sellout politicians to control the uh, black American majority of blacks in that area. So there is an effort now to basically push African Americans back to the 19th century. And the mess of pottage that has been accepted by the black majority, courtesy of Wall Street and Madison Avenue, and I call Black Neck Street, all the little traitorous black leaders and organizations like the National Association for the Abortion of Colored People, they have told us that this mess of pottage called Obama signals a racial millennium and we're all free and happy with our double-digit unemployment, with our homelessness, with our high rates of HIV AIDS, with double-digit dropout rates up to 50% across the country for blacks, the closing of schools and areas where blacks live, the closing of black colleges and universities, uh, police killings. In fact, within the last uh, few days, a mayoral candidate for uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi, a black man, was lynched and burned. Uh, I doubt if uh, that wonderful Eric Holder, the same gentleman who worked for Chiquita Brands and getting them off for mass killing blacks in Colombia, he framed Marion Barry and he's done nothing about the racial, unprecedented racial violence that has been occurring in the country since our esteemed former president George Bush left office. I almost miss George Bush. Well, well, Dr. Short, what does it mean, I, I mean, for the future of African Americans, if uh, one by one those who are in leadership positions are threatened, are incarcerated, are killed, um, tell me, what will it take to get a successful movement, a movement that has been tried time and time again, uh, but unfortunately have not reached the goal and, of course, that being equality across the board in the United States. What well, will it take? Equality is enough. I think we need sovereignty. We need self-determination. We need to have a plural democracy where, take for instance, if you're a, a Appalachian who just can't imagine having to celebrate Black History Month and you end up being governor, <laughs> and you don't want blacks on stamps, you don't even want black janitors, how can this person be trusted to make public policy that doesn't do anything but oppress black? 
Okay, so what's the answer? What, what is the answer then? There's several answers. One answer is black people need a civil war. We need a, 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 a African-American spring within our ethnic community to get rid of our comprador, sellout, black neck, traitor elite. They need to be turned on. Uh, just very simply, we need to, I don't care what you look like. I don't care how long you've been in the country. If you do not serve the interests of protecting our freedom and our young and our unborn, we need to bring them down. I, the NACP, I don't care how long it's existed. If they support uh, the injecting of our women with Depo Provera, if they're silent when uh, Dr. Kermit Gosnell can butcher thousands of black babies in, in Philadelphia and they can't mumble and utter, um, they can't say a mumbling word. Even Jesus on the Christ sort of got a grown out, but not the NACP. We must get rid of our sellout traitorous elite that wants to assimilate that's one and number two we need to start looking at working at raising awareness which can happen that will call for change even within our religious institutions the uh, black church and for that matter the saudi 